How's it going, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Planeswalkers Pub. I'm your host, Aaron. Howdy, it's RJ. Today, we are going to be talking about adding and cutting cards from your deck by using Aaron's Amara deck as an example. But first, let's talk about our signature card. Yes, every episode of the Planeswalkers Pub will feature a signature card that may or may not relate to episode topic at hand. Today's signature card is Cut to Ribbons. Cut to Ribbons is two-cost sorcery for one and a red that says Cut deals four damage to target creature, but it also has Aftermath, which means you may cast it only from your graveyard for the Aftermath effect, which is X black black, for each opponent loses X life. Yeah, this is a really, really cooler card um, from Amonkhet, I believe the actual set was. Yep. Um, where it has, it's kind of like a weird splice card, where two cards are kind of put onto one. Um, the cut portion of it is kind of like minuscule, especially in Commander. But I mean, four damage is still decent, regardless to a creature. Like, you know, you're you're killing a decent amount of stuff with this. Oh, yeah. Combo pieces. All those combo pieces. Um, and the ribbons portion is actually what I'm really, really excited about, just because, like, you know, whatever it says each opponent, you know 100% in Commander especially, that's going to be a fun time in general, because you're hitting everyone simultaneously. You don't have to worry about, like, okay, well, I'm going to hurt this one person, maybe I'll help out somebody else. Oh, yeah. It's a dietic sanguine. You don't gain any life. However, it's... The same thing, X and two black. I actually like that. It's like it's like baby's first exanguinate. Like yeah. that's that's really really no, that's really really good. Um, just because like you know, it's something too that people. I mean, graveyard shenanigans are definitely a thing. Um, but a lot of people, especially with the aftermath, they kind of forget about it in the graveyard. Oh, um, yeah, so no they're like you know, if someone's at like you know twenty, not even twenty. If someone's at like like I don't know fifteen life or some assets or whatever, you're just like, you know, okay, well I'm just going to go ahead and just make this X to fifteen. They're like, wait. You, when, when did you cast that? It's like, yeah, like, turn two? Oh. Oh, so I die. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, no, they're just dead. Yeah, like, it's it's really, really cool. I, I kind of like this card a lot. Plus, Rakdos, in general, is just going to love this to death because oh, it does yes. everything that Rakdos wants to do anyway. Sadly, no Popper because it's, it's a rare. But, you know, not everything has to work for Popper. Exactly. Um, all right, so let's just jump over to our main topic, um, which is going to be a deck tech. Kind of. Um, it's basically like a deck modification for the most part. So, um... We won't be going over every card in Aaron's Amara deck, but we're going to be going over what we what will be taken out for new cards that come out in Modern Horizons. Exactly. Um, Modern Horizons, for the most part, is a brand new set that's coming out uh, today and or yesterday. Um, I'm planning on actually release released on Friday, which is when Modern Horizons is actually releasing. Um, so hopefully it comes out today. Um, hopefully I'm actually going to be able to pull these cards and masses, but you know, just packs or draft or just like, you know, buying a box, something in that sense. Um, but this is kind of just me theorizing about what I'm actually going to do. Um, I also want to toss a small disclaimer. This episode is going to be a little bit weirder than normal because it's going to be a lot less structured. Um, I'm going to normally when people do these deck texts or whatever, they've already taken out the cards, they've already put in the cards and they're like, okay, well, this is what I took out. This is why I took it. I took it out. I'm not going to do that because editing your deck is going to be um, kind of a hard thing to do in general. Oh, yeah. Um, so I kind of want to talk about my theory behind editing and how I edit things. So it's nice to kind of see it as a live version of it, basically, with me just kind of going with my processes um, here for you all right now. Yesterday, yeah, you were helping me. You taught me the sort of chopping block method. So what's that? Let, let the audience know. All right, so the chopping block method is kind of something I kind of came up with. Um, I'm not sure if... I'm pretty sure that other people have actually used the same method. They've called it maybe something else or whatever. Uh, but my chopping block method is like this. So let's take... Um, a, basically what you're doing is you're taking a card that you want to take out of your deck um, to put in a card that you want to put in your deck. So what I usually say is start off with a card that you want to put in. Um, in the example, let's just go ahead and use Archmage's Charm. Um, it's blue, blue, blue for a counter spell that also potentially draws you a card that also potentially bounces something, I believe. Um, so let's just say we want to put that card inside of like, you know, our mono blue deck or something in that sense. Um, so let's just put that card on the physical table itself. Um, the card that we want to take out, let's say, is Cancel. Um, cancel basically is the exact same thing, um, except it's one blue blue, and it just is a straight just counter spell. Um, so then we're going to put that from our deck onto the table on top of the Archmage's Charm. Um, after that, it gets a little wonky because I classify them as basically fighting each other without a physical, like, you know, pinning their stuff in that sense. Basically what you're doing is, in your head, you're deciphering, um, in a perfect vacuum, which one would I want right now. Uh, blue, blue, blue might not seem like 
a big deal, but it can be if you're in a different color other than just blue. Like, you know, if you're... Oh, yeah. If you're running Jeskai mid-range or Sultai Muldrotha, it's well, going to be hard. Or even just, like, you know, in my Amanatu deck, which is what I'm thinking about putting the Archmage's Charm into, um, she's white, black, blue. That's so... Fair. It gets kind of wonky sometimes with the mana where I might not have all three blue sources open um, to then utilize this ability. No, oh, yeah. Or you need some of that blue. Like you're planning on casting, say... Mold Drifter or even um, because it's actually a Planeswalker attack, like, you know, some type of actual doubler. Um, or even just oh, like... Oh, you know, a fairy. Yeah. Or like, you know, a, pr- a proliferate type deal, something like that. Whatever. I might need that blue. And it's kind of hard to hold up a counter spell that requires all three blue yeah. and then still play your blue item. Um, that being said, that's the reason why Cancel's currently in the deck because it just stops it right from the gate. I don't have to worry about that. So I guess the question is, which is better at this instance? And in reality, in that particular deck... I'm actually probably going to say accept cancel over the Archmage's Charm just because I can guarantee 100% I can cast it when I need to. The other modes are really, really good. Drawing three card or drawing two cards for three mana, or whatever, especially if your opponent's end steps and that's if you know you don't need the counter spell, is good. Bouncing a creature is also good, but I don't know. For that particular deck, I probably won't run it. Um, that was just a very quick overview, basically, of me just kind of talking it through. Um, and what we're basically stating at that point is once you've actually made your decision and they've actually, the fight's over for the most part, you think, you know, each person has actually made their arguments of an accent. Um, you then decide which card now going back in. Um, in this particular case, cancel is staying in the deck and Archmage's charm is basically kind of falling off and going to wherever. Continuing on, let us get into Amara. Um, yeah, so I actually kind of selected about 10 or 12 cards, um, about 10 or 12 cards, give or take, or so. I'll count them, and I'll correct them. <laughs> I think it is about, like, uh, it's, I think it's actually like 18, was it 18? So 17 cards. That's not 10. <laughs> um, we might not get to all of them, um, but I will actually put the full deck list of both the before and after, um, after I've edited everything in AdSense or whatever, inside the actual show notes um, or the description below. So this way you can, guys can kind of glance at that and stuff like that since once we've actually finished it. Um, so let's just kind of take these cards in order for the most parts. I'm talking about our first card um, that I want to add into the deck, which is going to be Scale Up. Uh, Scale Up is a single green uh, for a sorcery. Until end of turn, target creature you control becomes a green worm with base power and toughness of 6-4. Um, you can also overload it uh, for four in green green, which basically means that your entire team at that point, every creature you control, um, turns into a six four worm. I like this card a lot. <laughs> it's definitely very good, but there's it will definitely do well in the Amara deck because you'll have thirty some lifelink tokens on the field. Yeah, and another thing about this too is just it just changes their power and toughness and makes and changes their creature type. Like you know, so. The original creatures are soldiers that she creates. It turns them down to worms, which doesn't really matter because I don't really have that many. Do they keep the lifelink though? Yes, they keep the lifelink. Because Do it, they? Yeah, it doesn't change. That's the thing. It doesn't change the actual. It doesn't change anything else about the card. It just changes their power and toughness and their creature type. That's it. So if you have any like pump effects or so like, hey, all soldiers get plus one, plus one or whatever, that will fall off. But you talk about like maybe like, even if it's like you're pumping it for, you've got like five guys, six guys, that's. Six, six fours with lifelink. Even if they don't hit anyone, you're gaining stupid amount of life. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's why I really want this card, because it's it seems really, really good. What I don't understand about this card, which you're going to call me a fool for saying this, why does it have to be a creature you control? Why can't I force my opponent's creature to become a six four? So if you're thinking, like, maybe turning, um... Like, maybe, like, Emrakul or something like that, like, 6-4. Like, yeah, or, well, I guess because it's a sorcery, you can't do it at instant speed. Well, yeah, but they could have technically like, made it into, like, an instant or that sense. That would have been too much, though. Yeah, because, like, like you 6-4 for at an instant speed for one mana. Plus, you can overload it, so basically it becomes Psych Rift at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, because at that point, like, you can change, like, their Blight Steel or whatever, like, make it lower or something like that, since you don't fully die to Infect right from the gates. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this card a lot. Now, here comes the downside. Um, let's toss 
scale up onto the actual table and let's find something that we want to take out in order to put it into. Um, the reason why I actually chose my Amara deck is because A, this one has the most cards I actually want to talk about um, to put into the actual deck, and B, because it is tuned pretty nicely to the point where it actually works very, very well. Um, I'm not entirely sure of the whole win record or whatever. I don't really keep track of that because we're commander players. We don't care, we don't care as much. Um, but it has won a decent amount of actual games. It has lost also a decent amount of actual games. Um, but it's one of those cards, too, that... Or one of those decks or whatever that I know 100% that every card in here I want to keep for the most part. But obviously upgrades are a thing and you want to constantly upgrade your cards. Um, I would say looking over the list right now, maybe Congregate. I know you like that card and it's done a lot for you because you've gained, what, 60, 70 life? All at once before, all yeah. All at once with Congregate. You gain a lot of life with this deck already. I feel like that's a bit overkill. It is a bit... It is a bit overkill, but the question is... All right, so let's put... So then let's go ahead. Um, I'm also, guys, you're going to hear... Bring up the chopping block. <laughs> bring up the chopping block. Um, you're going to hear, obviously, shuffling work because I do physically have my cards um, directly in front of me, so I apologize for that. Um, but it's the fastest way for me to actually do it. Plus, chopping block requires you to physically have the card themselves um, most of the time um, and then physically put them on the table. This way you can kind of just justify what goes where. Um, so scale up is on the actual chopping block. Um, as a way of something that we want to put into the actual deck. So let's go ahead and take out Congregate and put that on the top block as well. Um, now typically you would cast, if, it's your, if you're just going to switch out one card for one, that'd be one thing. We're talking about a few cards here. Um, so I kind of want to leave Congregate on the chopping block for right now. Um, and I'll actually put on the actual, you're seeing it on screen for the most part, how I'm just kind of just putting the cards just kind of to the side with what's going into where. And then eventually it'll fill up the entire screen. We'll can show the entire thing of what we want to do. And maybe we can move stuff around to justify better answers. Um, my defense for Congre in order to keep it in the deck is because it's an instant speed thing. Um, let's say that someone has like, you know, a psych rift or something, an accident or whatever. This is a sorcery. They're going to see it coming a mile away. As soon as you cast it, you're, yeah, your guys are all big and everything else, but you have to move to combat, like, you know, see if anyone has any answers or anything in that sense, whatever goes to blocks. Someone could just psych rift, or just, like, even just, like, bounce a couple of your stuff or whatever, or even just, like, you know, someone just sacks it and pings a bunch of your stuff. Because remember, they are 1-1s. One -ones. Until this resolves, they're still technically 1-1s. One -ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, once we become 6 fours, it's like, hey, that's really, really cool. But, us two, think about this way. Counterspell. Would you counterspell Congregate? Um, it depends on how much life you're getting. That's true. You're but also asking the guy who doesn't play blue. That's true, but it's one of those things, just, it's kind of just a general question. Like, you know, like, you know, most people use, it really depends on how much life you're getting with Congregate, but it's also one of those things where if I see scale up on the stack, especially if it's being overloaded, I'm, I'm counterspelling that. I mean, unless, oh, granted, I will also ask, like, you know, who they're going at. If they're going at me, then yeah, counterspell. If they're not, then I'll probably be like, okay, maybe it'll resolve. Um... I don't know. I don't know about taking out Congregate. I don't know. All right. I'm debating it. But it's on the chopping block, so let's just keep it on the block. Let's continue. Um, and let's actually just go ahead and continue on with that. Next is not a new card necessarily, but it's a reprint. A great reprint, I think. Altar of Dementia. It is an artifact for two colorless and states sacrifice a creature. Target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard. So I originally put this in here as a kind of a pseudo sack outlet. Occasionally it gets to the point where either I can't get through because I'm the guy's little one ones, or like, you know, I don't have enough guys or something in that sense. Truth be told, I put this in here not really as a mistake, but now it's that a win con. It is a win con, but that's the thing, is how many creatures because my creatures are only one ones. Yeah. And, the, and I've gotten a, outside of, like, you know, the scale up, I've gotten a real way of actually bumping them. Uh, you have Dictate of Heliod in here. You have, uh, what else? You have Beastmaster Ascension. You have... I mean, there's an Angelic Exaltation. Uh, three whites for an enchantment. And when a creature um, you control attacks alone, it gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, uh, where X is the number of creatures you control. So, I guess technically I could, like... Have this on the field, swing with, like, you know, one of my 1-1s one that then becomes, like, you know, let's say, like, a 6-6, six, six, which has happened uh, with Lifelink because Lifelink is awesome. Um, it hits a dude, gains me some 6 life, and then I'll sacrifice it to the altar? 
And then they mill six. And then they mill six. Your creatures have gotten bigger than just six, though. I know, but that's... It begs, it begs the question, is that Magic Christmas Land? Um, which, by the way, Magic Christmas Land, for those of you that don't actually know, it's one of those scenarios that you run in your head where everything goes right and nothing particularly goes wrong with your plan. It just it just happens the way that you want it to. And sometimes it does, most of the time it doesn't. I could take out First Responder, because that card's not great anyway. Or first response. First response is a three and a white for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, or each upkeep, um, if you lose life, if you lost life last turn, put a 1 1 white soldier creature token onto the battlefield. So it's one of those things that I like the fact it says each upkeep because it implies your opponents. So, like, you know, if everyone hits you, then you get three soldiers at that point. Um, they don't have life link, which kind of sucks, but it's fine. I mean, also with that, if you have, say, a, a pain land. Just tap that on your opponent's turn. There you go. You yeah, it. that's true. I don't have any pains in here, I don't think. Um, I could take a first responder for the ult. The, the problem is, once again, like, you know, Magic Christmas Land. Let's put the ultra on the chopping block. I guess let's put first response on the chopping block as well with the actual altar. So, the question here is, which would I actually want more? I, I'm a pessimist at heart. That's just kind of how I work. Um, so... I always think of the worst possible scenario and what would I actually prefer. Worst possible scenario, I'm probably taking first response. Now, why is that? Because, the, like I said, the altar, it, they're one ones, And they're probably going to stay one ones unless I have something else that kind of pumps them or something like that. It's not like a, a consistent thing where it's like, hey, like, you know, like, I'll just do... I, like I said, they're one ones from the gate and they stay one ones. That's the problem. Like if they if they kicked up to like you know become like you know four fours or three threes or I can do that religiously every single turn, um, then that'd be one thing. I mean, first response is really, really cool, but hang on, don't you have an anointed percent? What's the it's the white one that doubles tokens? The it has Gideon on it from Amon Cat. Uh, anointed procession. Yeah, right. Anointed procession. That's not currently in this deck. I'm I've not, got parallel lives. I'm not using it. I mean, you can just put that in over first response. I mean, it definitely putting alter dementor is anointed procession. Anointed procession is gonna win. Yeah. So all right. So then anointed procession on 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 the chopping block with alter. Yeah, anointed procession just wins. Yeah. Yeah. No, like that just it it doubles. However. Up we're going to wait, because just like when we were doing Lord Wingrace last night, the chopping block, you put all of your cuts and add additions on the chopping block, and you wait towards until you you decide all at once which ones you're keeping, which ones you're cutting. Exactly. Just because you can move stuff around, stuff and absence, whatever. So, definitely, what we're going to do is, um, so Alter, for the most part, we're actually going to take off the chopping block, because now we have first response on the chopping block, as well as no to procession. Um... So this way we can kind of decide of what where I work with that, but I'm pretty sure that that's gonna work out just fine. So alter, unfortunately, is gonna get cut off. Um, once we're actually cutting everything off the list, we're basically just kind of deleting it from our existence, and it's an awesome card, but just doesn't work well for what this deck wants to kind of do. Next up is regrowth. Uh, for one and a green, it's Another a sorcery. Another great reprint. Um, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. I like this card. <laughs> it's very good. It's just return a card from your graveyard to hand. Yeah, not a creature, not an instant sorcery, just that straight, just whatever you want to grab, my guy, go grab it. Yeah. I say yes, but the question is, what am I taking out? And that's always the question. It's just like, okay, well, this yeah. is cool, but what am I taking out? Um, so Regrowth is on the, is on the chopping block. Um, I don't know what I'm taking out. That's the problem. Uh, what's Crown of Empires do? Crown of Empires is uh, two colorless for an artifact. Uh, three tap it to tap target creature. Um, so Amara doesn't care how she becomes tapped. She just wants to be tapped. Um, ha ha. Uh, she just wants to be tapped. And then she creates an actual 1-1 one, one white soldier. So I kind of like the the crown just because it, you know, it, it's basically that. If I've got no other tappers online or no other way of actually tapping her outside of just attacking, which is dangerous for a 2-2, um, I can use this to kind of tap her to slowly start occurring my guys. Plus, Crown of Emperors um, also combines with Scepter of Emperors um, and Throne of Empires, or Emperors. Um, no, it's Empires. You had to write the first time. Okay, good. Uh, Throne of Empires. I don't know. I was going to say Emperors. I don't know. Uh, Throne of Empires um, to actually 
double it. So if you have all three of those artifacts on the field, all three of them on the screen right now, um, it has an additional effect, which basically says three tap it, tap target creature, and then gain control of that creature instead if you control all three. Um, so it's a decent way of like, you know, early game, I can tap her and stuff in that sense for like three mana, which does seem steep, but hey, if I need a guy, I need a guy. Mm -hmm. um, and then late, later game, once I have all three, if I have all three, it turns into a ginormous, I'm just stealing your boy. Um, every single turn <laughs> like it doesn't it doesn't just give it back when it untaps or anything else it's like it just i'm stealing your guy um i actually have done this officially like once in my magic curse since putting all three of them in my deck <laughs> and it was hilarious because like i had like all three just like because the um the throne actually creates like four dudes i'm sorry it creates like five dudes um the scepter pings you for like three and then this steals your guy oh god it was amazing it was an amazing turn and um and then after my turn, and then I then instantly was targeted and killed. But that's besides the point. The point is I got it off once. Um, going back to regrowth, but still on the chopping block, waiting, pa pa waiting very, very patiently. Thank you for that. Here's a question. Do I actually need a card that goes get stuff from my graveyard? Like, what am I going to go grab that I um, desperately need? I'd say deconstruct. Deconstruct? Destroy target artifact, then add three green to your mana pool. Technically, it's destroy target artifact, get three mana for free. It's a free In, destroy target artifact. It is, but you'd have to immediately use that mana. You have to already have a target. I feel like maybe getting something back is better. Would you rather have deconstruct or another copy of idyllic tutor? Because regrowth essentially, you cast your idyllic tutor, then you get it back with regrowth. Or you don't you get any? But you might be able to do it technically the same turn. All right, let's put um. Let's put uh, Deconstruct on the stack, or on the uh, chopping block. Um, the stack on the chopping block, technically, for this particular principle, is going to be the same thing, by the way, guys. Um, I kind of like... I do like the fact that it's a destroy target artifact on it, though, and the fact it's basically free, but I do have a bunch of other destroy target artifact stuff. Yeah, you don't really need that many. Yeah, not really, because, I mean... If I'm going against an artifact deck, and like everyone's kind of helping out and doing that stuff, because I've got like Six Slime, I've got like, you know, um, Rex Sage, I've got like, you know, um, there is the newer card that's coming out so that I'm probably going to pick up. Um, I guess I don't really need this, that too. Alright, so then, yeah, Deconstruct is on the stack with uh, Regrowth. Yeah, okay. Um, so we're actually going to. Normally, we would go through all of them, and then we kind of just do that. However, I kind of just want to just do, like, three at a time, just because it makes more sense that way. Sure. Um, so the question is, do we want to move anything around? Uh, so Conjugate is being taken out, and Scale Up is getting put in. Um, maybe uh, we're taking Anointed Procession, putting that in. Anointed Procession? Yeah, Anointed Procession, putting that in. And response, we're taking out First Response. Um, and then taking out uh, Deconstruct and putting in Regrowth. I really want my Conjugate, though. You, I know you like the life gain, but commander damage is a thing, infect is a thing, milling, getting milled out is a thing. That is super That true. prevents you from... I guess in our meta, in our playgroup where we play, there isn't that much infect or milling. Yeah, but there's definitely... The commander damage is... De like, you're right, though. Commander, commander damage is, is a thing. Yeah, commander damage is definitely a thing. Um, infect is not really a huge thing in our meta, but it yes. is... It's definitely there, and getting milled is definitely also a thing. Because I, it was, it got to a point where I actually like you know conjugated and just a bunch of other shenanigans. I got up to like two hundred life, and I still lost that game because like you know I just got infected out, or I just got just like commander damage to death. Like, yeah, I can. All right, and scale up is definitely a better. It is a better card. Like it is. I just don't like the fact that once again they see it coming. But if I use it on one guy or whatever, like that can help out too. Yeah. It's a good politic thing, like, hey, I'm gonna make my creatures huge and hit one guy. Yeah, like you know, don't don't block or whatever, like you know, because like some it does get sometimes where there's like those games where you're just like, I we need to kill him, or those we're just gonna die. Does anyone have anything cool? Um, like you guys are, like one turn to do some crazy stuff, and this can definitely hit through a bunch of. So I wish it gave the worms trample. I really, really wish they gave them trample. Like, yeah, give me no, a... that was that felt like a, a flavor thing that they could have, that they should have done. Not even flavor, just simple mechanic thing. Because like you're, you're making a like, because you're not using this on like you know your six six already. Like you're not using this on Majotha because there's no point. You're literally making it worse. Um, like you're not using it on like. I mean, yeah, you might be using your two twos or whatever, but you're not using it on like a five five because it just makes it a little bit bigger. Um, you're using you're using this on the smaller guys that want to get in anyway. All right. Fine, let's do it. So, Congregate, Scale Up Battle, or Scale Up Wins, 
Anointed Procession and First Response Battle. Anointed Procession wins, needless to say. Really? I'm so surprised. <laughs> I know, right? It's a huge surprise. Oh, my God. Um, the Regrowth versus the Deconstruct Battle. Um... Yeah, regrowth wins just because you can get you can you can get back something. So, yeah, that's just that's just how that works out. Um, now, normally, like I said, we would just kind of shift these around, but once again, we don't physically have the cards in front of us. Yeah, and you're, the good thing with regrowth in this specific deck is graveyard hate is a thing, but people aren't going to tend to focus on the token guy to hate their graveyard. Yeah, basically, um, just because it's, I've got a different strategy in mind, so that just totally makes sense. Uh, let's jump over to our next uh, card. Um, Ella? Ella? El Domri's Call. Or El Adomri's Call. It is a green and a white for an instance. Uh, search your library for a creature card. Reveal that card. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. What's... It's... A Delic Tutor? What's... No, no, not a Delic Tutor. Um, Whirly Tutor. The one, oh, it's yeah. It's a single the, green the single that, um, that searches for... A Green for a creature. creature. Yeah. Or not green creature, just a creature and puts yeah. it on top of the library. Yeah, this is Worldly Tutor. <laughs> yeah, well, it's actually a reprint. It's an older card that got reprinted. It's not a new one. Okay, well, it's a, it's a better version of Worldly Tutor because it puts it to your hand, not just on your top of your library. So you, you're still drawing an additional card like, after. This is a really good card. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm fully realizing it in my head. I'm just like, ooh, this is going to be broken a tiny bit. Yeah, it's yeah. Why would why would you run Worldly Tutor over this? Is the better question. Because mm -hmm. Worldly Tutor puts it on top of your library, which is cutesy. But I mean, for a single more mana, you get to put it into your hand. Yeah, I'm I'm down for that in every aspect of the word. I'm just down for that. Um, questions: What are we taking out in order to put this in? Maybe harmonize. Harmonize draws three cards. That's just that's an old commander staple. Is it lets you draw three cards. That's true. Back in um, Artifacts, Spawning Pit, what does it do? Um, you, it's, a, it's a free sock outlet, outlet, one, and it puts a charge counter on it. However, you have to pay a mana to remove a charge counter. Remove two charge counters, actually. And you have actually. to remove two to create a 2-2 two -two spawn artifact creature token. I mean, if you've got, like, Parallel Lives and Noise of Possession on the field, then, you know, you're, you're then golden because you're, you're, gaining, you're gaining creatures at that point. But the thing is, their spawns... Um, I put it in there more or less as like a... Well, here's the thing. I've also got the Taste of Karloff deck, so like a lot of the stuff from that kind of bled over into Amar by accident. Um, just because it's just like contact type deal. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm like, oh, cool, tokens want this too. But it's like, uh, Taysa uses this a lot, lot better. Mm-hmm. Um. Because Taysa, you double up the Yeah, you double up the... And the tokens. Exactly. Outside of that, um, back to Amara... Let's put Spawning Pit on the chopping block, just because I have a distinct feeling that this other card where it tutors up a creature is a lot, lot better. Um, because World of Tutor, for the most part, is one of the more powerful cards. Tutoring in general is one of the most powerful things you can do in Magic, just because it just is. It's essentially um, a tutor is every card in your deck that... It's a second copy in a commander that's insane. Yeah, it really is, because commander can only have the one, so that's just kind of how that works out. Um, Swine Pit's on the chopping block. I like Aladomri's Call a lot, just because what what's what's a creature that most people would tutor for, just at instant speed? Oh, I don't know. Maybe another tutoring thing. Protein Hulk. Yeah, you know, just, just a casual Protein Hulk. That's just, that's just how that works out. Like, you know, you figure, like, you've got, like, okay, I've got, like, seven mana or whatever. Cool. On your end, so I'm just going to go ahead and tutor. I'm going to grab Protein Hulk, toss into my hand, draw my card, play Protein Hulk. Like, what's good? Um, that's another reason why I feel like I put that in there, because, like, you know, Protein Hulk. is where I can sack it. Because most people aren't going to try to block it or anything yeah, crazy like that. Or, you know, the Seedborn Muse that's just sitting in your deck. What, take out the Seedborn Muse? No. Oh, yeah, tutor for Seedborn. Tutor for Seedborn. Uh, no, take out the seed. Yeah, take out the Seedborn <laughs> Muse, Aaron. Okay. So Spawn Pit's on the stat or on the chopping block, and let's put Adamri's car also on top of that. Yeah, that makes sense because Spawning Pit it's it's good. It's just it's not really what my deck wants to kind of do. Mm -hmm. um, another card that my deck doesn't necessarily want to do: uh, Birthing Bonds or Birthing Bows. Birthing Bows. I don't know. English is hard. Uh, it's a three mana artifact. Uh, it says pay four, tap it, create a two two colorless shapeshifter creature token with changeling. So, I don't think it's worth it. Okay, but here's the thing. Here we go. Okay, please explain. <laughs> okay, so 
it creates a shapeshifter, which is technically also a soldier. And I have no real soldier tribal in there, so that doesn't really make any logical sense. Yeah, okay. that can help you. Like, maybe in my soldier deck, yeah, that'd be great, because then I can just every turn create a soldier if I don't have anything else to do with my mana. Which However, is usually a lot with your particular deck, but yeah. Yeah, no, I do tend to have, like, eight lands just kind of chilling, because I don't have any card draw. We'll figure that out. Yeah, um, we'll, it's, we'll fix Mono White. It's we, on the list. We were going to do the Mono White for the deck tech, but then we realized that that deck's a, a train wreck waiting to happen, so we're waiting. Yeah, that's it's going to take a lot more. It's just like, you know, the hour and a half we, we allot for most of these episodes. Um, mm-hmm. To be like a part one, part two type deal. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> All right, video one, the mana base. Video two, the card draw issue. Video three, the mana ramp issue. Um... Video four. Why the hell can't you pick a commander? Legit. Uh, yeah, because you switch your commanders, what, like five times? Is, okay, uh, so it's starting off as Odric. On screen right now are all the commanders yeah, okay. that he currently has up. It was up. Odric, the Master Tactician, then... Oh, there it was, was Eight and a Half Tails. No, there was no... Before Eight and a Half Tails. Odric, there was something before Eight and a Half Tails. Yes, yes, there was. There was Odric, the Master Tactician, then um, Mono Way Unoffenza. Unoffenza, Kintree Spirit... Then, oh, right, right, the one that um, when you can't attack or some assets unless you pay... No, no, that one's whenever another we... non-token creature enters the battlefield, you bolster one. Right, 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 right. Then there was Thalia, Heretic, Cathar. That's when we messed up the trigger with when we were one of you wanting. Yes. Yeah. Then there was uh, Only Reason You Won, you jerk. Uh, it's not a fault you've got your triggers. Then there was uh, <laughs> uh, been... Eight and a Half Tails. Yeah, eight and a half, was yeah it was that. Eight and a Half Tails, then it was the guy that flips. Then Rune Tail, Kitsune Ascendant. And finally, where I'm at now is Darien, King of Kjeldor. Now this is now as in Monday the 10th. Yeah. By Friday, when this comes out, he could have changed. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, pro- it might change. Who knows? That's just like how Darian that works. Right now, but... He currently is liking Darren. But... Oh, actually, we missed one. After or before Anafenza, after Audric was Brimaz, King of Oreskos. So there's seven commanders for I've a single deck for a mono white deck that he just can't figure out what the heck he wants to do with it. Exactly. I mean, it's fine. That's just how Commander works. But I guess it was can... Soldier Tribal, then still Soldier Tribal, then Soldier Tokens, then Soldier Token Life Gain. And, and now it's just like Token Life Gain yeah. a little bit. It's with jank. some Soldier stuff in it. It's a weird deck, it's, but it it's plays jank. well. And it's I like it. It, is, like I said, it does play well. It's, it's something that kind of works, and it's, it's jank. And I do kind of like versing it just because it's... I don't know what he's done to it, so it's kind of like seeing something new every single time. Yeah. Um, just because it's just how it works. Going back to his actual birthing de- or birthing card, um, no. There's the birthing bow, we should just skip. It's too much mana to create a single soul, a single shapeshifter. You don't have any tribal anything in here. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking it more just because you know, anointed possession, like it was the doubling portion of the actual token being created. But like, even two mana that for a two for two two mana for a two two is essentially what you're doing. But you can only do that yeah, once. making bears. <laughs> yeah, it, it, making bears. Yeah. Maybe put this in Bear Tribal when you finally do that. Oh, yeah, that'll probably be really good. Oh, that'd be amazing. Because, um, what is it? Uh, what's her, uh, she says whenever Bear shows up, it fights? It, it fights something you, it doesn't, you don't control. Oh, that would be amazing and in her. And you put a plus one, plus one counter on it, I think. Dude, hearts. Hearts for her. Um, yeah, no, that's, okay, cool. All right, so then we're taking it completely off of the chopping block completely. Yeah, and it, just... it shouldn't have touched the chopping block, in yep. my opinion, but Throwing we'll off. continue. The next card is Good Fortune Unicorn. It is one uh, green and a white for a creature unicorn to 2 2. Um, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1 1 counter on that creature. I like this card because it's like Cathar's Crusade, but not Cathar's Crusade. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, I wouldn't even say Baby's First Cathar Crusade. I'd just say. It's an easier to work with Cathar's Crusade. Exactly. So the thing is, Cathar's Crusade, for the most part, is known for, like, you know, token decks in general. And granted, I do not have it in this deck. It costs three and two white. It makes, uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter 
on each creature you control. Exactly. So it's one of those things that, you know, it, it definitely gets crazy in token decks because, like, you know, you create, you create like, you know, three or four guys. Those guys each see each other. They then get, like, you know, four plus those encounters on them or whatever. Um, so if it does get really broken really, really quickly, the problem is everyone knows that it gets broken like that really, really quickly. And if it, once you put it down on the field, you're a humongous target. That's a humongous target. People get kind of scared and annoyed about it. Um, with this... I feel like it's a lot less scary because it's only hitting one creature at a time. So it's making my 1-1s, 2-2s, which is kind of cool. Plus they have lifelink, so that's awesome. Um, but also, too, like, you know, people are less threatened by it because, like, oh, it's a creature I can just kill it anytime I want. Like, no one's really caring. It's not pumping up your entire you team can all at once. You can shock it. Yeah. Like, you know, I feel like that's better because it can slip under the radar a little bit better um, than some of the other cards, than the Cathar's Crusade, which is the reason why I was thinking about putting it in here. The question is, obviously, once again, what are we taking out? Um, take out school clamp. <laughs> no. <laughs> Funny, but no. It's totally take out school clamp, bro. Uh, take out a forest. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that's another thing I was probably mention. I probably should mention this actually from the gate. Um, when editing your deck, and I will mention this at the end as well. When editing your deck, do not, do not take out lands to put in cards. Unless you're taking out a land to put in another land, don't do it. Or else you'll be like me, playing my Lands Matter Lord Wingrace with 29 lands, because I didn't realize I kept taking out lands. Yes. Don't, 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 don't say anything else. Just continue. Don't do it. Go past it. <laughs> it's really, you're, you're probably a really big disadvantage for me to move past that. Now, I say if we're going to put something on the chopping block, it should be either... Sphere of Safety or Sandworm Convergence? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and respond to that by saying, No, hold priority. Sandworm Convergence is a uh, six green green for an enchantment. Uh, creatures with flying cannot attack you or planeswalkers you control. Um, at the beginning of your end step, create a 5-5 five, five green worm creature token. Side note, I don't actually own the worm token, and I'm angry about that, but that's besides the point. Um, and then Sphere of Safety, we already know because hearts and it, everyone just loves it to death. Uh, four in a white, uh, creatures you control, or creatures can't attack you unless um, their control pays X with number of actual enchantments that you control. Uh, you control. Uh, so basically, you just stop them from attacking you on the ground just anywhere for the most part. No, I also have 16 enchantments in this deck, which is something I didn't realize when I first put the Sphere of Safety in here, but it works pretty well, apparently. Um, okay, so both of these cards are really, really good just because it protects me against literally everything uh the downside with token decks especially mine i create a bunch of guys on the ground i might have a hundred guys on the ground if i if they got flyers there's really nothing to do about it um i can tell you right now like ember cool attacking me that's gg well played there's i can't get up there and take a stupid thing out um sam reversion basically stops it and says hey go somewhere else um uh, plus it gives me a, a big dude on the ground to kind of punish them for doing that um what do we think about what do you think about land tax um land tax it's a You're good... playing green. You really don't need it. There's green in this deck. There's other ways for you to get your lands. You really don't need a land tax in here. That is I true. I think you're just running land tax just because you think it's great. Because it is. It's, it's a just... great card. It's just the fact of, is it worth keeping yeah. in the deck? It's not really necessary. You have I mean, other I ways took, to get your lands. I, yeah, I was editing Aminatu, and I took out the land tax from there, actually, just because it's one of those things where it's just... With, especially with Amy... My lands are perfectly balanced to the point where I never actually need the land tax anyway. And more importantly, it just takes up a slot where I could put something else more powerful. Um, but the question is... Alright, so let's put land tax um, on the chopping block. No, that's a cut right. Uh, let's put land tax on the actual chopping block. And then let's put this on the chopping block as well. Normally, we kind of just skip over it. But I'm actually going to go ahead and have them fight each other. Because I kind of want to defend land tax a little bit. Even though you're the one who proposed to take it out. Yeah, that's how it works. So, land tax themselves... You can... Uh, Single whites, in case you have never seen land tax before. Single white for an enchantment. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent um, controls more lands than you, you may search your library for up to three basic lands, reveal them, put them into your hand. Um, they shuffle your library, I knew this to say. Alright, so a few things about this. Number one, um, you can choose the opponent um, who has more lands than you. Occasionally, you might be against someone else that has a green deck. Occasionally, you might be against someone else that, you know, that just ramped faster than you. Or you might just keep a hand that doesn't have that much land and you just didn't really draw them. Uh, for like two or three turns, land tax is awesome. Number two, it says up to three basic lands. You're always going to get three lands. That's just how that works because it gets to the point where you're like, okay, well, I'm going to have to discard them. Who cares? You're siphoning out lands from your deck to then get better stuff eventually because people are going to usually blow up land tax if they just have a, a like, you know, return it off. It's like, oh, well, I've got, I'm going to target that because it's serious. And then like, oh, I guess I'll hit land tax because it's there. 
Um, so you want to kind of get as much value out of it as humanly possible, which is why you're choosing that. Is land tax strong enough to beat out this unicorn? The unicorn itself is good, but it's also a creature. And like Cathar's Crusade, it is going to cause some heat, but not as much. What about... Maybe growing rights. I know it sounds weird, but you're generating so many tokens, a majority of them are going to be the 1-1 one, one white soldier lifelink. There's no big scary token that you're going to be making that well, you want to populate. Well, it's not about that. It's fact, like, you know, just even putting down, like, you know, just, like, you know, growing rights with, like, you know, just Amara, like, you know, yeah, like... Because Amara can typically, like, you know, once I've got the tap on line, it basically creates a token every single turn. This creates two tokens every single turn, inadvertently. Uh, because, you like, you know, it populates someone. a lot more than just one token a turn with Amara. I know, but this guarantees at least I can just keep creating a guy. You know? Yeah, I... Mm. And that's the this, thing. This by itself guarantees it. Like, you know, if we have a growing rights versus land tax, land tax is going to be taken out because land tax is worse than growing rights. Like, growing rights directly helps my strategy. Land tax is kind of just there. I still, I feel like it's unnecessary. I well, feel like you, you make a, plenty of tokens on your own, you have plenty of ways to make them, and having growing rights in there just to get an extra single token every turn isn't worth it. We'll put growing ranks on the chopping block, um, and we're going to put the good faithful or good fortune unicorn on top of land tax um, as kind of a way of just. I would rather take out land tax versus the growing, but let's see what happens because chopping block. That's just how it works. Once it's on the chopping block, it can be taken off or put it back in. Next card is going to be our favorite card. Of basic planes. Or basic forest. Basically. Um, this is Basically. One of those, <laughs> this is one of those things. Um, next card is going to be Hall of Heli's Generosity. Um, as you can see from the visual images, the hearts everywhere. We love this card. We it's, loved it. It's a great card. As soon I'm as, putting it in soldiers. Yeah, as soon as we saw that, we loved it to death. Um... In our, set, in our first ever episode, just talking about the actual, like, you know, the top cards that we were talking about that we liked. Um, we love this to death. Um, this card works. Now, here's the cool thing. Remember how I said never take out a land? This is the one instance where you can take out a land to put in another land. That's say, fine. You're not really taking out a land because you're putting in a land. Exactly. So, how come, it, if those of you who go ahead and look on the deck list on Tapped Out, you're going to notice he has more forests than planes, and yet there's more white cards in the deck than green cards no it's about even it's about even but like the you have more land green lands than you have white lands yeah it's one of those things that um i don't know i've only got let's see i've only got like 15 uh 15 forests 14 planes but here's i can take out a forest to put in hall of yeah exactly there you go white quest boom there you go um, Easy. I don't even... Yeah, put it on the chopping block still. Like, you know, we're tossing on the chopping block, but it's one of those things that, like, for it's lands... It's a little bit easy. It's a, lands are a little bit easier to kind of just, like, justify, because, hey, it's a land for a land. Who cares? Um, plus, once again, I've got 16 enchantments in here. To get them back, it's just... That's just... Come on. Um, granted, Growing Rights of Iklamok, um flips over to become Guy's Cradle, um, but, you know, if someone decides to destroy it beforehand, cool, get it back, do it again. What's good? Um, just absolutely amazing, absolutely absolutely amazing. Um, that's three, so let's just go ahead and sum everything up for the most part very, very quickly. Um, so Swarming Pit we're actually taking out and then putting in the Emerald... I cannot say that word. Endomero's Call? El Eladomri's Call. Yeah, we're taking out that, putting in Eladomri's Call, so that resolves. Um, the Hall of Heliod, needless to say, that resolves against the freaking forest, no one cares. Um, Land Tax with... The unicorn. All right, put it in this of a vacuum. If for some reason we're short on mana, because we only have, like, let's say we draw like only four or some of that since whatever, and like we, we you have no way to tap Mara down in a in an emergency land tax would be better. In an emergency land tax would be better, but the thing is the fact that I also have Paradise Mantle in this deck, which comes down for zero. So I don't care what color of mana I'm paying, because I'm not paying any mana at all. Um, and then equipped it for one colorless that you're equipping, and then you can tap the creature to then tap to add any color that you want. Yeah, Lant I feel like you're right, where it's like, Lantax, I just think it's it's the best card in the world, and I'm treating it like the best card in the world. In reality, it's not that. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and take out Lantax and then put in the um, Unicorn. All right, continuing. This card I was looking forward to. Not just for this. Well, this deck is a, a weird choice for it, this card is Genesis. For four and a green, it's a 4-4 four, four green creature. 
But honestly, you don't want it on the battlefield. This is a card where if I drew it in my initial hand, I would Wait skip my turn. To, yeah, skip your turn in order so to mulligan it. Uh, the reason being is because its effect is at the beginning of your upkeep. If Genesis is in your graveyard, you may pay two in a green. Um, if you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's also a 4 4, which doesn't really matter because it's probably going to be in the graveyard anyway. Um, I've got 22 creatures in here for the most part. A lot of them are important. Actually, mostly all of them are important because they're either tappers, um, like Law of Rune Enforcer, who I just love because he's from the newest sets. Um, it's a single white for a 1 2 human, doesn't matter. Uh, pay one generic tap it to tap target creature with converted mana cost two or greater. Shout outs to MR being a two drop. Um, as well as just tapping. I still, I, I find it so weird that you use creatures that you normally would use to tap down your opponent's creatures to tap down your own stuff. Well, it's one of those things that, like, you know, let's say, like, you know, that's, like, you know, my opponents have a 3 3 and a 5 5, or, like, you know, I don't know, their own commanders was, like, you know, a 4 4. If I swing with Amar, she just dies. Like, dies. Versus putting out the law, like you know, the rune enforcer. I can just tap. Her, I can just tap her down. I create a guy. The cool thing about her is the fact that most people think, okay, when well, I tap it, I'm going to be left myself open. She creates a soldier that's untapped. So officially, I'm never open. Um, it's really it becomes really, really hard. Uh, Mentor of the Meek is something I definitely want to potentially get back from Genesis if it gets destroyed, just because it gets that's card draw from the gates. Um, Gideon's Law Keeper. They pay a white, tap it down. Oh, I need a Gideon's Law Keeper for my soldier deck. Yeah, he's also a soldier. It's definitely awesome. I might have an extra one. Is that the box? Oh, is it in the box? If it's in the... Yeah, it's probably oh, in the box. Aaron has this massive cardboard box with like 5,000? It's, it's, it's more a lot. than that. A it's, way, it's, it's a, a lot, lot of, of cards. cards. It's a lot of cards. A lot of cards. Um, and even, I really don't feel like looking through it again, but yeah, I will. Even with Genesis, bringing back Reclamation Stage could be really cool too. Like if someone like put something else out where you got to like blow it up later on or something in that sense plus it's you pay three mana you get back whatever you want um Requiem Angel just creates a bunch of different guys we might actually put that on shop yeah uh wait what does Requiem Angel do whenever another non-spirit creature you control dies put a spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield eh well here's the thing They're, my co my token she doesn't care about non-tokens she doesn't care yeah, about tokens just not spirits just not spirits I create soldiers so right. if any of my soldiers die I get spirits so now my guys on the ground become what was in the air um who still get buffed and everything else from all different stuff because I'm not running any tribal stuff would cause that to trigger exactly um, my favorite tapper actually is uh, Silesia um, Avangel Sile uh, Evangel Silesia Evangel um, which basically is a green and a white for a 1-2 elf doesn't matter um, pay one and tap it to tap an untapped creature you control um, and then create a 1-1 one, one green sapling. So if I'm using her ability to then tap him R, I'm both creating a sapling and a soldier. A bunch of these little guys I just want to get back. Plus, let's not avoid the simple factor. I've got the soul package in here. Um, like, you know, so like... Hey, sister soul, sister. Da, 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 da. Um, so, Souls of Ten, Suture Priest, uh, what's the... Souls Warden. Yeah, Souls do you, Warden. Do you have a Soul Warden in here? Uh... You don't have a Souls Warden in what here. What does she do? She's the same thing as Souls Attended. Literally the exact same thing. No, I've got the, I've got the green one. Yeah. There's another white one. Is there? Souls Warden, I'm, I'm telling you. Okay, well, I will, it's on screen right now, I will pick it up. It's, um, I got a foil one at the card shop the other day. <laughs> that would never pick it up. Um, it Essence has Warden. the same art as Essence Warden. I would actually take out um, one of your tappers, probably, for, not Souls Warden, but for Genesis. It's also um, Impartial Ordeal as well, which is the newer guy. Impassioned or or Raider, I would take out for Soul Warden. Because Soul Warden is whenever a creature in general enters the battle. Yeah, those are always good because it counts your opponent's creatures as well, and not just your own stuff. Um, the question is, should Genesis go in the deck? I'm saying yes, because like many of times, board wipes are the only way of dealing with token decks. Mm -hmm. um, if Genesis is in my graveyard, I can basically slowly start reoccurring those key... Like, you know, gain life piece. Like, you know, just recur my soul's attendant every single turn. Story time! So, a while back, we're playing a game. Amara, Sahili, and I think Soldiers. Maybe another deck. I'm not sure. All I know is Amara's popping off. Protean Hulk comes out. Gets rid of the Protean Hulk. And I think I wipe the board. Protean Hulk leaves. He pulls out 
all of his combo pieces. He pulls out. Oh, it's great because like all because the thing about Proton Hawk is the fact that uh, Proton Hawk basically states the fact that um, it's a five green green for a six six. Doesn't matter. Uh, when the creature dies, search your library for any number of creature cards with total converted mana costs six or less. Uh, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So, A, it puts them directly onto the battlefield, which is uh, some shenanigans I'll talk about in a second. Um, but B, it's any number, so you can count it up. So what I usually go for, if if I know there's not going to be another board right for a bit or something in that sense, I'll usually go and just grab, um, in order, Souls Attendants, which shows up on the battlefield this way. Um, Souls Attendants, Suture Priest, Essence Wardens, that's four, um, and then Impartial... Impassioned Orator. And then Impassioned Orator. Um, just because that's total converted mana cost of six, and trigger, 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 because the Essence Warrior drops down, she doesn't see anybody, then the next one drops down, she, I gain a life, then the next, then the third one drops down, I gain two life, then the fourth one drops down, I gain four life. Like, However, in said story, the reason why this goes back to Genesis is immediately after he did all of that, I wiped the board again. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. So <laughs> everything he just got with Protean Hulk went right in the graveyard. Again. <laughs> Genesis can get you back Protean Hulk, and you can get... The other ones that you didn't initially grab. Or even just using Proton Hawk to just do, like, the symbol combo like I did beforehand, whatever, which was, like, you know, let's just go ahead and grab, like, you know, Seaborn Muse, and then another thing that has one, another one drop, like, you know, Gideon's Law Keeper. Um, I'm curious. You could probably do some crazy things with zero mana creatures. Are there any zero... Wait, what? There's no zero mana creatures in this deck, but I'm just thinking about combos with Protean Hulk. Like, all the... I know Phyrexian Walker... And I mean, there's like there's like flash Hulk combos, which is like you know, cast flash. Um, the next spell you cast, whatever has flash or whatever, you flash out Protean Hulk, and then you have to pay the upkeep cost or something like that. Since whatever, you just don't. He just dies, and then you just go grab your piece at that point. But I'm yeah, not but blue, I'm thinking so. you can just grab an unlimited number of zero drops with the death of a Protean Hulk. That's true. That's very very true. But that's one of those things where it's like you know, I actually probably should have grabbed um, Birds of Paradise and Seaworm Muse, not the Tapper, but that's fine. Um, all right, so the Genesis is Genesis is on the chopping block. So the question is, what are we taking out? Note that also on the chopping block is still uh, the growing ranks. Um, RJ is not really fond of this card, or at least doesn't. Honestly, I love growing ranks in a different kind of token deck. I love growing ranks in what I'm going to call uh, the creatures of the forest, where it's a many different, very powerful tokens. You have like the oh, what was it from the first episode? Um, rhinos and. Centaurs, right. worms, worms, stuff in that my, sense. Then you pull out uh, Grove of the Guardian, which you can pay five mana into tap and create an eight-eight elemental with vigilance. If you have crazy big tokens like that and proliferate them, then that kind of makes that kind of, like, them, that kind of makes that kind of makes then it more. makes sense. But why pop? Why put it in the deck? You could put something else in there. There's something better that you could put in the deck other than just a bunch of little. Guys. One ones. You're essentially paying four mana for one one one, and then in another turn, a second one one, and then a third turn. Yeah, a it's third it's, one, it's one. like how much do you have to gain in order to actually get back your money back type yeah, deal? Yeah, it takes at least five turns, I think, before it would be worth it. And five turns and that's is also, and that's a also, third of a commander game. And that's also provide that they don't board wipe to get rid of your tokens because that's another thing too. Like there have been games where I'm just like, okay, well, I can swing in here or some assets, or I can use the guy to block, but if I block, I can't guarantee I can make another token in time for the trigger to happen. Yeah, populate, you have to have a token on the field. Yeah, and it's... An, it, yeah. Okay, so let's take out... Going... Giant Adiphage. That Who? Is an, it's an old, cheap card for, like, 8 mana. It's an 8-8 trampling insect, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you make a copy of it. The fact that it's trample is amazing. The fact that it makes a copy is also amazing. The fact that it's an 8-8. How much is it? It's like... It's like 20 cents. It it costs 8 mana. Like 2 green and 6, I think. Or maybe it's 9 mana at 7. It's on screen right now. Um, I probably might just be buying that, too. <laughs> Fun fact, by the way, um, this is kind of this is like, you know, another, like, you know, s short story. Um, Tim's actually editing. I mean, great. This is only, like, episode 3, 4? Um, I've actually, there's a lot of cards I'm actually just like, I should probably add this to my deck. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of cards I'm just like, I'm just really... Just throughout doing research for these episodes, we're just finding really good cards. So yeah, it's, 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 it's getting dangerous because, like, you know, our wallets aren't appreciating it. No, no, uh -huh. not at all. <laughs> all right, so 
So growing rights, or growing ranks, is on the on the chopping block. Let's put Genesis on top of that. Um, I'm pretty sure that Genesis is going to win, but growing rights might have another maybe. Kind of doubt it, but it might have another um, shot at this. All right, our next card we're looking at is Giver of Runes. It is a one-two for one white. If the name rings a bell, it's because it's almost the same thing as a classic. Mother of Runes, uh, which is also a one white. Uh, she Mother of Runes, however, is a one one. Um, so Giver of Runes basically states that you can tap her. Uh, another target creature, very, very important. Another target creature you control gains protection from colorless or from the color of your choice until end of turns. That is really rare. You never see something, say, pro-colorless. Um, yes, as well as the fact of mo- or Mother of Runes, um, which basically states the fact that it gives um, target creature gains protection from the color of your choice. Now, um, I'm going to reference it as the given names for the most part. No one actually says that Mother of Runes anymore. Um, mm-hmm. Everyone always just calls her Mom, um, just because it's... That's kind of how mom does. Like, you know, mom usually protects you, stuff like that, whatever. Um, because Giver of Runes basically has the exact same type of principle. It also um, has the same-ish type of art, um, being a female and everything in that sense or whatever. Holding some glowing thing. Holding some glowing Probably thing. Probably a rune. Um, Giver of Runes, which is basically the internet account just coining her as stepmom. She's stepmom. She's younger. She's prettier. <laughs> Downside, <laughs> just pretend to trade up everything in that sense. The downside with stepmom, though, is the fact that um, she can't target herself because uh, it says another target creature you control. Um, the cool thing about Mom, which I kind of like and I actually have done before, uh, Mom is in uh, my Voltron deck. Um, I've actually like you know attacked with Mom or whatever, or like you know someone's like saying like okay, we're just gonna like, you know this eight eights at you or whatever. It's like you know it's a green eight eight whatever. I'm like you know eight eights on Asens. I'm like cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna block and then before damage, I'm going to give Mom tap Mom here pro green. Um, with Stepmom, you can't do that because it says another target creature, which kind of sucks. I kind of want to put her in this deck because it, Amara is one of those things that she is my main token generator. I've got no one else that really creates tokens. Um, I do have that other chick, um, Selesnia of Angel, but you got to tap her, you got to tap something else. It gets kind of complicated. She works very well with the Mar, but not so much yeah, by the herself. Yeah, the idea is you try to get something with... Uh, yeah, like you tap yeah. her with the Mar. You this way, you know, the, you're the, getting two you're guys. The Mar um, is one of those creatures like, you know, that, you know, it's, it is your commander, so it's already a target, but it's also one of the bigger targets because that's my main creature creator. Um, basically. So giving... The Giver of Runes or Stepmom kind of protects her a little bit when I can't find Lightning Greaves or when I can't find, like, you know... Now, I have a weird thing I'm going to suggest. Take the, out Lightning Greaves? No. <laughs> the Empires. The Empires. I know you like them, but well, here's why the thing. do you need to be stealing people's stuff? It's not about stealing people's stuff. for three damage. Yes, you do get five soldiers if you have all three out, but is it really worth it to pay three mana and tap it to gain control of something. Well, here's the thing. Or to tap. Something. I use the Crown of Empires more or less just as a tapper. Not like if, if I can steal someone's something, awesome. If not, I'm just using it as a tapper. That's literally all I'm using for ever. Like three the, mana. But yeah, but if it's three mana, but to tap down an Emerald that's about to kill you. I. You have other tappers. I got other tappers, but if I don't have them online, or the the other tappers are creatures, so they can all be killed. Yeah. Which is this very is an plausible. Artifact. That can still be destroyed. It can still be destroyed, but it's a lot harder to take out the artifact versus, like, you know, take... Like, it's just... That's the thing. It's just a tapper itself. Like... Then right, well, take the, out one of the other... Bit, well, I guess... Let's take out... I can I can agree to take out um, Scepter of Emperors. So let's put the Scepter on the stat. You or, keep saying Emperors. Empires. I don't see an O anywhere on the top of... Well, there's an of... But I don't see any O in the word empire. So we're going to take out the scepter of emperors. No. Um. <laughs> no, no, okay. But here's the other issue. The reason why I'm doing this is to make it easier to put in cards later. Well, because if you're taking out the scepter, why are you keeping the throne? I'm keeping the throne because it creates, for a single colorless mana, you can create a 1-1 one, one soldier. Think about this. Yeah, a single colorless after you already paid four to cast it. So the first soldier costs five mana. The second soldier costs six mana. The third soldier costs seven mana. 
it's redundancies. It's the fact in which he's the fact that, like, I can understand the principle of, like, you know, the growing ranks where it's, like, you need something actually in order to create or whatever. This, it 100% is able to create a soldier every single turn reliably, even if I don't have a Mara on the field. So if I do my other stuff, whether that populates or my other stuff that, like, you know, that doubles it, um, this just becomes really, really crazy too. Plus, it just gives me more creatures on the battlefield, which is actually what I want. I never really use it for the create five thing. Like I said, I've only done it once in my entire Magic career with this deck. Um, so I'm not really caring about that. I'll give you the Scepter of Empires, just because the pinging something for one doesn't really matter as much. The only reason I put it in there is because like when you get the Dream Team going on, yeah, it's awesome. But then, then you gotta look at Crown of Empires. <laughs> yes, it's an artifact tapper. I feel like there might be there might exist one that's cheaper that does that on an artifact that's cheaper. There probably is. We'll glance at that once actually, if and when it actually comes up to that. But so for I guess yeah, maybe we just leave them alone for now. Or, well, I'm fine or with, take out the, the, the scepter. I'm, I'm, taking, I'm fine with taking out the scepter. Um, especially for Stepmom, just because she's able to kind of protect it. Now, let's put Stepmom on the chopping blocks, put the scepter on the chopping block underneath of Stepmom. Um, I'm not so crazy about Stepmom in this particular deck. Really? And here's the reason why. She herself is a creature, which means she's a lot easier to kind of kill. She also can't protect herself. So, like, the typical thing was, like, you know, like, with Mom... Is the fact of someone's just like, okay, well, mom's in the field. I'm just going to, like, you know, path your creature. Well, no, I'm going to tap mom and get my creature pro white. Um, okay, well, like, you know, instead of that, I'm going to, like, you know, path mom. Okay, well, no, I'm going to tap mom and give my mom pro white. You know, I can protect her in that sense. Give her, she's got no protection. She can't protect herself. I mean, it's great against colorless sources, but how often are we worrying about colorless things stealing or exiling our stuff? Or even targeting our stuff. I mean, granted, you can be like, okay, well, it can stop, like, you know, that Eldrazi that's attacking you. That's Most of a big thing. If you can get one, well, I guess you have a hard time getting flyers. If you get one flyer, you can protect against an Emrakul. That's true, but the question is, like, you know, I'm not really drawing out flyers like that. I mean, I do have um, the very, very cool enchantment of uh, Eldrazi Monument. It's, it's an not an enchantment, it? it's an artifact. Is it an artifact? It's a monument. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Duh. Um, yeah, so Eldrazi Monument, which is five colorless for an artifact. Uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have flying and indestructible. Um, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. If you cannot, sacrifice the monument. I'm in a token deck. I got creatures for days. Um, in fact, I've actually been in plenty of times where like, I, I might not have any of the creatures except for Amara and a tapper. Um, untap, and then on my upkeep, like you know, I'll stack the triggers where it's like I'm actually tapping... The tapper or tap a mar to create a guy, then sacking the guy to keep the monument around. Um, I've done that a few times or whatever, just because it's your trigger, you can order them however you want. The monument's really, really good, so that's the only way of actually getting myself up to the air. But the question is, is Stepmom good enough to be in this deck? In a Voltron deck, yes, because I've only got the one creature to protect. In this deck, I'm mainly versing board wipes. Yeah, no, I guess then it really wouldn't be that worth it. Yeah, I'm really not versing really board wipes in this deck. So Stepmom's I mean, Stepmom's cool. Like, you know, hey, Stepmom, awesome. Like, you know, I want to run her, but not in this deck. So I say she loses. She loses. The scepter goes back into the deck. It will probably be taken out for something else later. It's definitely... Lives. We're going to leave the scepter on the chopping block, actually, just because I do agree with you that it's... Mm -hmm. And the reason why I put it in there, legitimately the only reason why I put it in there is because my friend gave me all three of them, and he was like, hey, if you're going to run, run, run all three. And I'm like, okay, cool. I've got the open spots anyway. I might as well. But new cards are coming out, so let's start taking out the stuff that we're not using, and let's just rock the stuff that we are. All right, so the last card that we're actually going to be talking about is probably one of my favorites. Um, I don't like this one. What? I don't, I, I don't, well, let me rephrase that. I don't like this in this deck. I don't get it. Okay, so let me explain. Um, the card we're talking about is Hex Drinker. It's a single green uh, for a snake that has level up mechanic. Um, it's a Beautiful two mechanic. and a one. Um, so level up, the way that kind of works is the fact that you actually pay one generic mana into this, um, and you can basically keep leveling up from, like, you know, from level one to level, like, you know, three to seven, then to level eight. Great old mechanic. It's a lot better than a lot of the old level up cards, because the old one level up cards stipulated that you had to have a colored mana to level it up. Yeah. This one just says generic. Yeah, so you can basically put, like, you know, anything, any deck that actually produces green or just any color for the most part um, after it's already on the field just works out. Uh, it starts off at level 1 at as a 2-1 uh, with level up, obviously. And then once it hits level 3 to 7, it has protection from instant. Uh, it also becomes a 4-4. And then level 8 or higher, it has protection from everything and a 6-6. Six, six. 
It's a 6-6 six, six with protection from everything. Uh, yeah, you're running a token deck. But it's like a mini progenitus. This help this does not help you in tokens. But it's literally like a mini progenitus because it's like a single snake. That's like yeah, a mini Yeah, it's progenitus. a blocker, but I don't I don't see the purpose in it being in this deck. Well, here's the thing, because, like, occasionally I'll just have, like, yeah, I got like, it's a token-based stack every faster, but occasionally I'll just have just, like, randomly mana floating around that I kind of just want to just pump into something, and this is a cool thing I'm going to throw my mana into. Then get something else. Get the, the, the tower that lets you, once it hits 100 counters, you win. Get... Oh, yeah, that also has Shroud, too. Oh, Yeah. yeah. The, the, I don't know the name of it, Tower of Babel. It's, when we were looking through your book about five minutes ago, Shauna, Cissé's Legacy, a, a green and a white, zero, zero, legendary creature. Shauna, Cissé's Legacy can't be the target of abilities your opponents control. So old school hexproof. Old school hexproof. Well, actually well no saying... spells. Spells can still hit her. What, just says abilities? Just says abilities can't be the target of abilities your opponents control. That's less it's, good. It's less good, and it's also, it's... She gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. That's better, at least. But she doesn't have trample or anything in that sense. She's Neither does of... Hex Drinker. Yeah. Well, once it gets protection from everything, then it's just protection status. Well, true. Then it does have... Yeah, it's it basically... Can it can't be blocked at that point. I don't know. All right. Well, let's let's put both of them onto the chopping block. Um, I don't know. She's She does seem cool. It's just... I mean, she is technically going to be bigger just in, inherently right from the gate. Mm-hmm. Just based on what I've got. Also, Hex Drinker, before you level it up, is going to eat a spell. Plus, or... they can also, like, in response to me trying to level it up, they can just kill it. Yeah. They could just ping it and kill it. That is true. You have to put three mana into it before it becomes a 4-4 four four with pro instance. And so... if I have a three mana right on board or whatever, I'll, like, you know, tap it or tap it. Like, hey, I'm going to tap it or whatever to level it up. It's like, cool, in response to level up... I'm going to kill it. <laughs> yeah. And I just wasted three mana at that point. Versus her, she can drop down as, like, you know, a 30-30. That's Magic yeah. Mistress Land a little bit. But, like, you know, even drops down, like, it was, like, a 7-7. Seven, seven. That just sounds really nice. Yeah. <laughs> a 7-7 seven, seven pro abilities. Uh, yeah. Pretty good. Two mana. 7-7. Seven, because seven. that's pretty much on average what you're going to get out of her. Yeah, give or take. And then if I create any more stuff or whatever, it kind of gets bigger and bigger. If I've got the uh, other chick on the field, I don't remember her name. I'm really sure because she's, like the best card in my deck. Uh, it's one green green. She's on screen right now. Um, she basically states that uh, whenever a creature shows up on my side of the field, um, she puts a plus one plus one counter on her. Don't remember her name, but it's Champion of Lambold. Oh, sick. Uh, so yeah, so Champion of Lambold. It's like something Champion of Lambold, I believe. I don't know. She's golden. I love her to death. Just because... Oh yeah, no, I played against her in standard. It was brutal. Yeah, it, it is. Because like, you know, a creature shows up, you get a plus one plus one counter onto her, and then... Creatures your opponents control can't block creatures you control if their power is less than her, the number of counters she has, or just her power. So with Amara, you just basically just, like, every single turn, you're just creating soldiers. And it's even better because, like, you've got, like, a doubler on the field or something in that sense. It just, it gets broken very, very quickly. And the bit, that's, it's hard to deal with her because you're just like, okay, well, I'm just going to, like, stop this way. She doesn't attack. Cool. My stuff can still swing and it's unblockable because yeah. they're all one ones. Like, what is good? Pretty much. <laughs> So like I don't I don't know what to tell you you're you're, you're dead. <laughs> um, all right, so going back to this then. Sure, let's put Shanna in um, instead of the hex drinker. But uh, the question, uh, uh, no, no chopping block. Hex drinker's on the block. Shanna's on the block. But the question is then, what are we actually taking out? Oh, maze of it. Yeah, so let's just totally take out the maze of it. Why not? <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. a land that doesn't tap for mana. True, but. I mean, like, at least in Lord Windgrace, I have Urborg, so it can tap for a black. Yeah, I guess, but it's also one of those things where, like, you know, Maze just protects you from not dying. What was that one you just scrolled over? It was a mana doubler thing. What if fourth is tap for mana? Oh, uh, Vernal Blooms? It's control... Oh, hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. So this is a symmetrical effect in which it does actually help out your opponents, but typically I'm the only one playing green for the most part. Uh, well, here's the thing. I'm not going to play this against your wind grace deck. And plus, it's in, if it's in my hand, I can choose when to play it. Yeah. Type do like that. So it's not like I'm just like, I'm just putting it down just for a sake of putting it down. Like, I'm only putting it down if I've got, like, you know, the most benefit from this. But then it's um, just a dead card in hand. And see, here's the problem. Like, sh as good as she is... She's not worthy of taking any of it um, out. Lightning Greaves. No, we're not taking it. The, that, I, no, I'm being serious. I'm not memeing with this one. What do you mean? How, in, why do you need to protect, this is going to sound silly, why do you need to protect your commander heavily? Because. She's two mana. Yeah, she's two mana, but then she goes four mana, then she goes six mana, then she goes eight mana. Like, people want to, she is, 
Imara is the only way I'm actually creating tokens in this deck by myself outside of, um, like, you know, what is that stupid enchantment that taps her for a great, um... The Presence of Gond. Yeah. The Presence of Gond is the only way I've actually, like, she, that creates Elf Warriors or whatever. I'll eventually probably put in Squirrel's Nest, maybe, as a troll thing if I've got an extra space, but I don't think I will. Squirrel's Nest in... I don't know. Squirrels. Squirrels, not scrolls. Um, the other chick that Crown taps and creates something. I still think you should take Crown of Empires out, but you insist that you need a tapper that won't die I to a board wipe. I took out the... Even though you have Smuggler's Copter and other vehicles. Smuggler's Copter is utilized just more or less as a way of tapping MR. So what's the other guy, The other vehicle? Uh, do I have another vehicle in here? Yeah, you do. Oh, um, Mobile okay, Garrison. Okay, that's two. You, could, that, you have that, so you don't need... Well, that's the thing. Mobile Garrison um, allows me, when it attacks, I can untap Amar and then tap her again. Well, no, see, that's the reason why you have that, so why keep the Crown of Empires in? Because it taps other people's stuff. I. You have other tappers. You, do you really... Yeah, that are creatures. Okay, someone wipes the board. You're, does that say... It says tap target creature. If you're so worried about someone wiping the board... They're not going to have that crazy thing that you need to tap down either. That's true, but if they then pr produce it later on, or more importantly, like, think about it this way: like you know, if like your your turn is before mine or something like that, since you drop the Ur Dragon after the board wipe, which has happened before, um, you know, I put down my tapper. Let's say I put down like you know, uh, Gideon's Law Keeper or whatever. He's going to have summoning sickness, so I won't be able to actually tap down your Ur Dragon on my, on your turn because he's got summoning sickness. I just die. Versus the crown, if I put that down. I can then tap Ur Dragon when it goes to your turn, provide you want to attack me or something in that sense. Like, it's an... It's, it, the artifacts don't have summoning sickness, which is mm -hmm. the reason why I have it in here, because I can use it immediately or whenever I need to. I see you have fe Sphere of Safeties. Do you have Ghostly Prison in here? Uh, I took out Ghostly Prison, actually, for uh, Sphere of Safeties. Okay, gotcha. I was going to say then I would have taken out Ghostly Prison, but yeah. um, what Spell about the Clamp's too good. All right, all right, so we can keep in the crown... What about taking out the throne? Yeah, I would take out the throne. I well, I don't like any of the pieces of that set. Unless you have all three of them out, they're kind of dull. No, I was thinking about, I was like, all seven pieces of eight. Oh, from, shut up. From Pirates of the Caribbean. I have all pieces of Exodia. <laughs> I play Pot of Greed, drawing two cards. Yeah, this is the full thing. It's like, I play Pot of Greed, drawing two cards from my dueling deck. From my dueling um, yeah, Draw no, your, your last pathetic card. <laughs> My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. <laughs> Just looks at his next card. This card is pathetic. <laughs> I, I watch Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't play it. My bad, guys. Um, uh, what's your thoughts on Johnny? Um, I only really use him just to gain the three life. I'm not gonna then lie take to him out. The, the you really. I mean, it gives my creatures. And what's even worse, it gives my creatures vision, so I can't even really like attack with Amara. Yeah, in no, order would, to get her trigger. I need. You wouldn't want to attack with Amara, but I, I still think. Well, yeah, but sometimes there's an empty board, so I'm like, cool. I'm gonna swing with her anyway, like you know, it's like normal. The only thing about um, not wanting to leave a Johnny in is Intangible Virtue only gives your tokens vigilance. A Johnny gives all your creatures vigilance. Well, thing, I don't want Amara to have vigilance. I understand you don't want Amara to have vigilance. However. You shouldn't be attacking with Amara. Exactly, but it's one of those things where it's like I don't have, I don't really have any of the creatures that are being attacking him. I mean, I've got like I've got Smuggler's Copter and the Mobile Garrison, but like that's kind of a no, I whatever. Have something that you might think is weird. You're probably gonna say no. Um, Mentor of the Meek. What take out Mentor of the Meek? Yes, for mm. or for Shauna. Fun fact, I did just put him in. <laughs> he is really good, because whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you can pay one and draw a card, but you do have Skull Clamp in there, which draws two for one. I've mana. actually, and this is a true story, I have never used Skull Clamp in this deck. Really? I've is it never, just like you've never drawn I've it? I've never or? drawn it. I've never drawn it, and then when I did draw it, I either died instantly, or I didn't want to claim it in my guys because I need to block them or something in that sense. Also, you do boost your guys a decent amount, so maybe yeah. taking out Skull Clamp, because I took Skull Clamp out of my soldier deck, because my soldiers get too buff. Well, you also you also have stuff that buffs your stuff. My guys are just, this is a general, like, I've just, I pride myself in the tokens that I make, because Amar is the only one that actually makes the tokens, and I feel like that's part of the problem. Um... But in general, like, you know, so the ones that I want to clamp, it's like I'm willingly getting rid of it. It's like I'm already didn't do anything that turn. I mean, we could totally take out a skull clamp. Yeah, but like, then again, it's a creature versus an artifact. Well, that's true, but that's a, that's that's still but Vandal Blast is a thing. Because here's the thing, like, even if I have, even if I have, like, you know, if I've got Sean on the field, whatever, that's like, let's say I take out a Johnny, I put out Sean on the field, and I draw a skull clamp, I play a skull clamp, by claiming any of my gods, I'm literally making her weaker. And drawing two cards is cool, but 
got I've got harmonize for that. I've got just a bunch of other things. I've got mentor of the meek for that. So yeah, let's take out. All right, so let's put skull clamp on the chopping block. And well, let's I would put... keep skull clamp over harmonize. I mean, harmonize is a classic because it's just draw three cards four mana, which is good. But this is draw like triple that for the same amount or That's... quadruple that. For the... well, or no, me no yeah, 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 you're right. Triple that for the same triple amount. That for the same um, amount. I'm taking a skull clam. Yeah, go ahead. Well, actually, no, no, going on the chopping block. All right, just so go on the chopping block. Um, let's just go ahead and resolve that. Uh, skull clamp isn't strong enough to actually beat out Shauna, just because it's cool in order to draw cards. But if you don't have any creatures on the field, um, or even still, if you only like the one or the two, I'm yeah, not if you need on... that creature, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, and I'm I'm not putting it on my commander because I don't want her to die at all. Um, Why not? Because <laughs> I gotta recast her. Yes, yeah, two pay two extra doesn't really matter. But like when it gets to the point where you're paying, like you know seven or like eight mana for our two two it feels bad i mean you could um, just put that i know you gave the enchantment to me but you did you gave me that enchantment that makes your commander cost commander tax cost one less it doesn't matter like i said she's a two two so like i mean she's rarely ever dying anyway um uh, because everyone's really worried about just you know the tokens that are killing you <laughs> um so final thoughts on this i like i like the edits i really like the edits um i mean we did spend an hour and a half going over cards we like, cards we don't like. Me yeah. Yelling at you for being silly. But. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we didn't actually get to all the actual cards on the list that I kind of put together. Um, but I mean, it was also 17 cards, and like, you know, you see how well we did with you this. You have using this deck. Why, why'd you put the Valkan Ori in? I'm an opposite. I don't. All right, so I'm going to move Valkan Ori out. Put Valkan Ori in this deck. I'm you probably going to put Valkan Ori in this, in this deck. deck. I'm very, very probably just going to put this in Because I feel like it can, it, can do, it can do better in here or in Taysa. Like, it just. I put it in Amy because. It's Amy. She just she gets every new card I own. Like mm -hmm. she demands it. Um, so yeah, and yeah. So that's just kind of how that works. Um, but yeah, no, I like I definitely like the edits. Um, I like your arguments because it's always nice to have someone kind of go back and forth. Um, that's another thing too, guys, is the fact of when you're actually making your edits. Um, if you're by yourself, that's understandable. But if you're not. Ask other people. Just oh, like, yeah. you know, put them both on the table be like, hey, which do you prefer? And then talk it out with them. Um, it's easy to convince yourself that, like, you know, one thing is better than another. Like, you know, keeping the Empire's uh, combo, the three cards or whatever, that seems decent in my head. But talking it out, it's a stupid freaking plan. Um, so, by editing it, it makes it just a lot better. And also, to keep editing your decks. Um a stagnant deck is never a good thing because it means that you're not trying to grow it up at all. You're not trying to get better at it. Um, even if you're saying, oh, my deck's perfect. If you... No, it's not. <laughs> exactly. No, it's not, for starters. Um, and secondly, you have to remember the fact that you can't say it's perfect because if you're losing even one game, yeah. that means that your deck didn't do something you're supposed to do. Yeah. Basically. It just didn't do something you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, like, I'm going to invest in an Immortal Sun just so I will never have to play Amanatu again. <laughs> But like I said, you're, you're putting a moral sign in what? Wind Grace. <laughs> but that's, you're turning off your own commander. <laughs> I, this deck runs without the commander. I don't have to have Lord Wind Grace out to do stuff. You know that. Yeah, that's true. But you're also turning off, uh, what, Ren and Six or whatever. Or Ren and Stimpy, whatever his name is. <laughs> Ren and Stimpy, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think like the internet is slowly turning him into that, by the way. He is Ren and Stimpy. Come on. <laughs> But yeah, so let's jump over to the clamp step where I say thank you, thank you, thank you um, for watching for watching and listening to this actual episode. Um, we have, as of the recording of this actual thing, about nine or ten ish subscribers, which is awesome. Um, keep that up. Definitely hit that mom. like button. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely hit that like button, definitely hit that share button. Um, tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone for the most part. We're glad that you're enjoying these episodes. We're seeing we're getting some views. I hope that you can let everyone know, hey, found this new podcast. The guys are kind of okay. <laughs> yeah, so we're just okay. We're okay. <laughs> we're okay. Um, but, yeah. So, thank you guys for actually listening and watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Hasta mañana.